Did Auburn's next quarterback beat USC in the Cotton Bowl yesterday? Three temperatures are likely for several hours inland and a few hours closer to the coast. Yes. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby. Thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen Every single day. Happy. Uh, it's the first Charlie Tuesday of 2023 as we are joined by Auburn Message Board legend Charlie Five. And man, watching the Cotton Bowl yesterday, Tulane and USC, everybody, a lot of Auburn fans, it kind of felt like uh, the whole Auburn contingency was pulling for Tulane because of what Michael Pratt was able to do in the final few minutes of the game. And look, he's not in the portal yet, but his name keeps popping i mean it popped up a month ago charlie right. five like as soon as the 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 portal period was opening everybody's like watch for the two lane kid watch for the two lane kid and you know you, you you're hearing from different sources that he's really thinking about it and like i don't know if nil is as driving of a force in the portals we think it is and you and i think it's a huge part of it I can't imagine anything else he could do to raise his stock and raise his value and raise, you know, maybe what OTV could potentially throw at him. I think Michael Pratt, uh, the, the two lane quarterback, is a real, real factor here. Sure, sure. Look, Michael Pratt's a great player. Um, today is Tuesday. He played yesterday. It takes roughly 24 hours for your name to pop up in the portal. I would not expect his name once it pops in the portal to be there very long. I think he's going to be somebody that's going to jump in. Uh, he didn't necessarily have the game that I thought he would have to sort of bolster his value to where it was like, hey, let's get multiple places uh, sure. you know, bit in a bidding war or whatever. But, um, you know, this is a guy that's been rumored that Auburn has either had interest in, uh, you know, or – you know, whatever for for a very long time. Thought he was going to go in the portal. Then he said he was going to stay at Tulane. Um, I would say if he's not in the portal by third, if his name hasn't popped up in the portal by like Thursday or so, yeah, he's probably not going to. He's probably not going to go anywhere but you know stay at Tulane. So good player. They their offense is not a super throw it down the field type offense, but he's very efficient. He's very accurate. Um, he did have, uh, you know, he had a rough as far as from a completion percentage game against USC, but he's through, like he had eight completions for 234 uh, yards. So like yeah. and two touchdowns. So like he, he throws the ball down the field and he's that accurate. last drive was something else. Man. Yes, for sure. For sure. Ooh. So uh, he'd be a great addition, but it's like, man, that that's another thing I'm learning about the portal is like, just because kids, it, it all happens so fast. Like th there's there's kids that are that have been in there since the portal opened, and then there's it just seems like, boom, a name pops, boom, they commit. So, I I, I wouldn't necessarily worry yet on uh, any as far as quarterbacks go. Um, just because or, or or any player of position that you you feel like Auburn needs to compete next year because. Everything moves so fast once they hit the portal. Sure. I mean, I would I would almost venture to say the ones that are in there and have been in there for for a so, somewhat extended period of time, you know, they may not be somebody that that Auburn necessarily wants or or is or is going hard after. It is interesting how long some kids have stayed in there and how instant others are. Um which I mean, we've talked about this before like if you're going to enter the portal, make sure you have a plan, like make sure people want you. And there's some kids where it's like it's clear that Auburn wants them, and then you know they would visit Auburn, they visit other places, and they're still just chilling there. So it, it is interesting how different players have handled different types of recruitments. But you know, with the news of Grayson McCall, which I think was the guy that a lot of Auburn people he wanted, it. Um, the the fit was there, the personality was there, the scheme fit. I mean, all of it goes back to fit, and I, and I think Grayson McCall checked pretty much every box and sure. he, he's staying at coastal Carolina. It sounds like academics are a part of that, right? Charlie five. It, it sounds like, yeah. um, and, 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 and I, I mean, would say he's a, he's would, a legend there, right? He will be a legend at coastal for a very long time. 
Yeah, I think he was going to be a legend at Auburn. I think if his yeah. – if he, if his, uh, I don't know if it's necessarily like a, like a, a class completion or like or grades scenario. I, let me take that back. Class completion, like disregard that grades area. I'm, I'm not sure if it's necessarily that versus just a what classes I was taking at Coastal yeah. academic, like, academic, academic not necessarily well, grades. Yeah. To me, there's two different avenues totally. of academic there's like sure. i don't try in class and then there's like my whatever i'm doing does not the credits translate. don't work yeah yeah right. the credits don't work he was going to be the guy like there's no doubt about it he was going to be the guy so uh man you just think about the freeze offense and how he would have you know translated like it's not just an auburn thing like we've talked about progress towards degree whatever auburn's mm-hmm. got an issue but like he went to florida like didn't Florida one of them yeah couldn't work at Florida. There were several places. So this that wasn't an Auburn thing. So he's going to be there at least one more year at, at Coastal. If I were him, I'd probably just go in the draft. But um, man, that's a bu- that's a bummer. But I don't necessarily think that's it for for a quarterback recruiting. Yeah, and you mentioned how quick it can move with a couple of different position groups. And you, you got to think Auburn gets a quarterback still. You got to think, and we'll touch on what is, what do they do if they don't in a second. But the other one's what linebacker and offensive line. Is that kind of where you are with the three, the three position groups where you're like, eh, you know, I'd like a little bit more there. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, quarterback linebacker, like you said, you, 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 you feel a little bit more comfortable going into the next year. If you have others, others added for sure. A thousand Mm -hmm. percent. Yeah. All right. Can Auburn win eight games with Robbie Ashford, right? Like what happens? What happens if Auburn doesn't add a quarterback through the transfer portal? And it is on what we assume is Robbie Ashford. Let's touch on that in just a moment. Charlie Five right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show brought to you by our friends at LinkedIn Jobs. Charlie Five, you've hired people that were terrible. Did you use LinkedIn when you hired them? No. You've also hired people that were perfect. (laughs) Yes. The most perfect hires imaginable. Now, let me just ask, what service did you use to go and find these people? When they were perfect, I, I, I used LinkedIn, for sure. <laughs> LinkedIn jobs <laughs> helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. How quick did you talk to the qualified candidates when you use LinkedIn jobs? Within Charlie seconds. Five? Within seconds. Seconds. Yes. That's not always the case, but sometimes <laughs> it certainly happens. And uh, you can check that out today linkedin jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college did you did, did you pay anything when you posted your job at linkedin jobs nope i don't believe so nope it's free that's linkedin.com <laughs> slash locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions apply all right could auburn win eight games with robbie ashford in yes. 20 20- 23. I think this is a fun question. And I think there's some games where you look at it and it's like, man, it would be nicer to have a quarterback. And, and let's go into this conversation, Charlie Five. I'm higher on Robbie Ashford than you are, right? That's fair. Probably so, but I'm not low on Robbie Ashford. Okay. Like here, here's the here's where I want to back it up just a second. I want to back it up just a second. Hey, back it um, up, Charlie Five. Yeah, I'm gonna back it up. Come on, just quick. back it up. Back it up. You, on you want to back it up to the ad read or just right? Not before? that far. Not okay. that far. Not Got that it. far. But Got here, here's the deal. Look, everybody thinks that a quarterback, just a quarterback that we add, is we have to have that to to like exceed expectations of 2023. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm just not sure that that's accurate. I'm not okay. sure that's. I think there's a there's a select few guys that we think that are better. That Hugh, not us, that Hugh thinks are better than what the production he could get out of Robbie Ashford developed another year would be. So I, I'm eight games. Eight games to me is about the top of what this roster could probably achieve anyway. Um, so sure. I, I, I'm not sure that. I, I guess what I, what I'm trying to say is I feel like. Hugh is comfortable with not just taking a guy, like just let's just take a dude at quarterback. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't think it's that. I don't think that's the scenario. I think it's can we find somebody that's clearly better 
than what Robbie can bring us based off of last year's production, not even counting or, or not even that, but like be, as go into a competition for uh, spring and, and fall to be the leader and push each other to be, to be better. And I just, I, the things I want, the, th- the things that Robbie does really well is the things that I've seen Hugh take and make, you know, just unbelievable quarterbacks out of. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I think if I think if if we if it comes down to it, and that's who we roll with, I I, I think Hugh's going to be that. That means that Hugh's comfortable with Robbie, not to go have to push for somebody else, even if it's just getting a body. Like, I'm, I, it's not a dire situation. You know what? I'm, does that make sense? What I'm saying? Like, it's not just yeah. A dire no, I, I, I'm go with ahead. you. I'm with you. I, I think he's going to be selective, and also. I mean, Hugh Freeze is, I mean, he's pretty protective of his offense. And he's sure. just not going to give it to some dude because he's like highly rated in the portal. Right. And so, um, yeah, I, I, I'm with you on that. I, I think the need for a quarterback for the sake of getting a quarterback is a little overstated. And 100%. And, and, and let's be clear on this, Charlie Five. You've got Robbie and you've got Holden. We'll see what happens with TJ. But like, you've got a baby goat with Hank on this roster. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and it's just like, we're going to be, it's going to be a little distracting at times. We're going to be watching games at Jordan Hare stadium. And there's going to mm. be this little baby goat on the sidelines. And it's like, Oh, it's Hank. He's learning ready to strike in like three seasons. It's going to be incredible. Oh, totally. Totally. All right. No, you, you said that perfectly. Uh, just a second ago, the baby Taking, goat thing. Not <laughs> that was awesome. That baby was goat great. named Hank. But just taking a guy just to take him, like I, I just don't yeah. see that. I don't see that's that that's going to happen. I think it's going to be if you take a guy, it's going to be a guy that you think is a, a hundred percent better than Robbie. That's like an, a worth another win, if that makes sense. Like he's that much better. So uh, I'm, I'm going through. Just, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going through my tabs to to get to the schedule because yeah. I want to run through it real quick. And <laughs> there's a story up that Auburn Live had about a. Uh, Keldrick Falk saying that he's like way more comfortable with Hugh Freeze's staff than Brian Harson's, and he's like, like he he only knew him for like two weeks. Like this is that much more comfortable. I saw I saw a thing that said he's already weighing in at six five two fifty or two sixty, two sixty. All the places wow. having at two fifty that is incredible. Yeah. All right, so I think a lot of these games is like I don't know. I don't know how much just like a little bit, but let's just let's go into this conversation assuming the quarterback that we get is better than Robbie, right? Let's just okay. throw that out there. Okay. So like UMass, you go to Cal. I'm assuming Cal's not good, and then you host Sanford. It's like you're you're three and zero regardless. Should be three and zero. Yeah. There, right? All right. So then sure. you start conference play on September 23rd. You go to College Station. This is the first one where it's like, okay, you know, I actually think Auburn did a decent spot to win this game. They've done actually pretty well in College Station historically, but the th- this is kind of it where it's like, okay, they're going to be good defensively. You don't know what they're going to bring offensively, but defensively, like at this point in the season, they're usually pretty good, right? And so this is the first game where, okay, if somebody is better than Robbie, you're probably going to see a little bit of a difference here, right? And and this could be a that could be a Jimbo gets fired or not game. That's awesome because it could be the first. It could be the first. Uh, I mean, that's that to me would be the barometer of their season. If you if if you go in there and lo- it's 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 way more impactful if they were to lose at home than were to win at home. If that makes sense. So yeah, I mean that that's going to be a big game for them. I think Jimbo understands that how how important that act, that game is hey they still don't have an offensive coordinator do they i don't, I don't think know. they do i don't think they do i don't think they do nobody well, jimbo fisher is the quarterback whisperer right yeah right, and uh, then you, you got george at home probably not winning that one anyway right like probably not winning yeah. that one anyway so we're really looking at one game where that matters you go to baton rouge i don't feel great about that one either way no I'm gonna be real with you it's they're just gonna win get, there. They won the West, and I think they're going to be better next year. So it's like, ah, I don't know about that one. Ole Miss at home. This is one. Dump I truck. I think Dump. we win regardless. Dump truck. That's what, that's what I'm going to call that game. You're going to get that. That's the circle. That, that is the circle the calendar game. 
I'm almost expecting a blowout. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Mississippi, this. Mississippi State is the week after that. It's right. Like, Another one that you should. I, I mean, mean, do we know? Like, do we know? Like at home, I kind of feel good about that, regardless of who the quarterback is. Right. Vanderbilt, let the baby goat in that one. Let Hank play. Hank could throw for 300 right there. I mean, he could do that against anyone, but Vandy, come <laughs> Vandy on. Vandy for sure. And then in you the go to half. Arkansas. This is another one. I'll, I'll couple this one in with AM. I think Arkansas and AM, it's like you're on the road. You probably want a more experienced quarterback. If we're assuming they're better than Robbie, I, I like our chances a lot more if there's a quarterback that's a little bit better than Robbie than that one. Okay. I'm with you. I don't disagree. New Mexico State, doesn't matter. You're going to win that one. Then Alabama. We'll just have to see, we'll have to see I, what I don't know. happens there. That one actually, like, I don't know. Maybe. maybe. I mean, the more... It, it the seems more, like it's losing its luster a little bit, you know? The more you talk about the schedule, like, man... It's a great schedule for us. If, it's such a good schedule. Oh, my and gosh. if you're going to... If, you, if you're going to ta- if you're gonna say, hey, look, I want to roll with Robbie and I want to develop him and see what he can do, there could not be a better schedule for him this year, this coming year, to say, he's my guy. I, I'm looking Malik, a, a taller... Mm. Almost, hey, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. More athletic Malik. I'm just going to go. More handsome? Well, yeah, definitely more handsome. I, I think mean, so. I don't want to say definitely, but because Malik's I, pretty I will. Handsome I too. think he's definitely more handsome. Malik's pretty handsome too. But like, if you're just going to say, hey, I want to roll with Malik, and this is the schedule to start off with it to say, hey, I'm going to go yeah. and develop. This is the one to do it. This is the one to I'm do it. I'm with you, so, man. I'm with so, you. Uh, but, but again, I still go back. If – you add a guy, you feel like he's better. Like he is one or two more wins. He 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 gives you one or two more wins than Robbie. I feel like if you if you take a guy at this point. Yeah, I think it's A and M and Arkansas. Maybe one of yeah. the Mississippi schools. Like, may, I mean, it's, it's those four games to me where okay, can you win one more? And honestly, dude, like I'll bug a little bit. You can you can couple Alabama into that one too, just because hmm. I think I think they're losing some of the luster up there in Tuscaloosa. I I really do. We'll see how they replace. I, I mean, I just don't know how you replace those guys you left that are leaving, but we've said that before. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, um, I have a quick PSA before we talk about linebackers, filling oh, the well. linebacker hole. Fill it. I don't care if you are pro Robbie or against Robbie. Please spell his name correctly. I'm it out. is not IE. It's not an IE. And I'm, it is R O B B Y. I'm guilty. I thought you were trolling when you did that. You actually just misspelled it. <laughs> yeah, I just misspelled it. You are so you are so better than that. I'm better. I got to do better. You were so better than better. that. Hank, it's a little different because there's different spellings. H a n k g o a t. But with Robbie, just b b y. I was B-B-Y. wondering where you're going with that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was wondering where you're right. going. <laughs> Auburn is looking at some linebackers at the port. I want to touch on those guys in just a moment. Right here on Locked On Auburn. I want to encourage you to join the Locked On Auburn Discord. You can see a lot of people misspell Hank's name. A lot of people misspell Robbie's name, but still, we're talking about Auburn. A lot of passionate conversation. It's free. All you have to do is click the link in the episode description down below. All right, so it sounds like there's two linebackers that Auburn may be interested in. Maybe one more than the other. We'll have to wait and see. But Ahmad McCullough, uh, he is a linebacker. He's been playing football for a long time, it seems like. At Maryland, he did an interview with Cole Pinkston at AuburnLive.com. He called it uh, his dream school. Dream school. Which is a little weird. I think he's from Baltimore. I can't find anything that says otherwise. So, like, I don't know what's up with that, but that's great. Um, but he's, he's experienced. His grades and stats and stuff are okay. They're not great. Maryland made a big deal on his bio that he led the country in fumble recoveries in 2022. Hey, and I'm like, hawk. dang, how many is that? And it's two. Hey, hey, you're a leader, though. You know what I'm saying? You're a leader. Whatever. I'm cool with it. So, Ahmad <laughs> McCullough, that, that's an interesting one. The more interesting one, though, is this Deuce Spurlock dude. He's yes. from Madison, which is great. And it sounds like I was talking to my Maryland guy about, uh, not Maryland, Michigan. He's transferring from Michigan. He's a Michigan linebacker. And I was like, you know, what, um, what are you hearing about this? He's like, I wasn't really close to him, um, but he originally like wanted to go to Auburn, and for some reason, like, just didn't happen. It's like, mm. okay, 
All sounds right. familiar. Um, yeah, not a fan of potatoes, I guess. I don't know what it is, but yeah. So I want both of them. Yeah. So, so we've been making a joke. Like, as, as you look into, as you look into linebackers, okay. One of the things, one of the things that's hilarious is the number of tackles that a lot of these guys have. Okay. Mm -hmm. But when you look into uh, what you, when you look into it, it's like, there's solo versus assisted, okay? And like for example, Virginia has a linebacker. You know, I'm not. I don't want to poopoo on him because you know we may never get him. We, I mean, we may get him. He's he's from Atlanta. I think his last name's Jackson. He has like he had like a hundred tackles last year, but like seventy of them were assisted. This kid from Maryland. So so now we're looking at the the uh, solo tackle versus assisted tackle ratio, okay? And if you have a positive ratio, that's who we want, okay? And this Maryland guy, regardless of tackles, he has a – whatever it, it shakes out to, he has a positive solo to assisted tackle ratio, if that makes sense. So, yes. good player. He said Auburn's his dream school. You know what? At this point in time, we need bodies. Let's roll with him. Uh, you know what I mean? And then uh, the Deuce Spurlock kid, I mean, that seems like 90% of the kids from the 2022 class. Hey, I really love Auburn, but uh, – <laughs> I have no idea what's going to happen at Auburn, and, sure. and after and and nobody called me uh, more than once, and nobody talked to me about NIL, and nobody uh, acted like they really liked me. So, uh, I mean, Deuce Spurlock's a kid from freaking. He kept Madison. asking me what my name was. It was the weirdest thing. Yeah, he called me Sparlock or something. Sparlack. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's ridiculous. So that's that's a kid who's from Huntsville area. Who loved Auburn? I mean, he's. They, I, I saw some stuff where he's like he's six one, two twenty, two thirty ish already, uh, and he's got a you know basically his whole career left to play. So right, I'd welcome him. I welcome him in, and it's somebody we we target like we wanted in that class, and we just didn't get. So yeah, I uh, would love to have him. Absolutely love to have him. You got to have linebackers uh, just for the um, number aspect. Um, yeah. So yeah, I would take both of them in a heartbeat. Yeah, and like I don't know if either of those guys are better in 2023 than Cam Riley. I mean, I, I assume that Spurlock has higher a higher ceiling later in his career. He's just younger. Like McCullough, I mean, you, you need more than you need more than the linebackers that we got. So I'm cool with it. Even if he's our third linebacker, it makes our roster better. You know. And the problem is when you talk about when you talk about linebackers, it the com at Auburn, the conversation almost ends after Cam Riley. That's that's the problem. Like you, like you, you almost have to take whoever will want to come because it just seems like we're so we're so so thin from like guys that can contribute and like play early. So uh, that's why I feel like these like movement on linebacker is somewhat concerning. Like it seems like it needs to pick up a little bit uh, as we move forward. Because, yeah, I mean, the other guys are what? Eugene Asante, which I don't know. Maybe knows? a different scheme it'll work. Who knows? He played it, did a different scheme at North Carolina, I believe, right? before he came here. So you know, maybe it could happen. And then you got Woodyard. Wesley Woodyard. Yeah. That's that, uh, Robert Woodyard. And then, uh, you know, you Robert got Wesley Woodyard. Steiner. Yep. And then Wesley Woodyard uh, played for the Steelers. I'm so sorry. Desmond, Desmond Tid Tisdall. That's Tisdall. another guy we've never seen in action, but like, could the light come on in the new system? Who knows? There's just a bunch of unknown stuff. I got yelled at Wesley Steiner, of course, too. I got yelled at the other day for not mentioning Powell Gordon. Your thoughts on me not mentioning Powell Gordon? Well, no, I don't think there. I don't think that's that's bad because there there's an unknown on what position he's going to play. Sure, if he is going to play in the middle on in line at linebacker. Then I think that is a he is definitely. Uh, a com in the conversation, but like the two, last two twenty eight in last the year's last roster, staff, the last staff kept talking about he was going to play edge, he's going to play defensive end, he's going to rush the passer. Like we have no idea what position yeah. this kid they want him to play, where he'll play at all. If he's going to be six two two twenty eight, they say he runs like a four four, uh, and he plays in the middle. Heck yeah, let's let's. That's like to me. If that's where he's going to be, that's almost like adding a portal guy because sure. he was not going to ever play at edge. So, um, I mean, I have no problem talking about Powell Gordon. It's just that we have no idea what position he's going to play because the last staff 
was indefinite on if the, where they wanted him to be. They just wanted him on the team, which is great, but they had no idea where to put him, where to develop him, whatever. So uh, I'd love – I wish – I you know, after watching some of these games, uh, these playoff games like TCU – uh, stuff guys like that that they had do uh, they had dudes that look I mean like built fast middle linebackers that look just like Power Gordon so like I'd love to have him play uh, you know I, I love to have him be like be in the middle so sure um, I love to see him see him work out right uh, Charlie Five how can people find you love you hear you support you all that stuff buddy absolutely find me on Twitter at the underscore Charlie underscore five uh, and the locked on Auburn Discord every single day. Uh, the corner message board at auburnlive.com or Monday, Wednesday, Friday on the Dad by Golf Pod. And speaking of auburnlive.com, on tomorrow's show, Justin Hokinson Hoke. will join the show. You can find all awesome. of my written work at auburndaily.com, and we'll see you tomorrow. This has been Locked on Auburn.